Ladies and gentlemen, we all enjoy playing the game of Valorant, and we certainly enjoy finishing a game, checking our tracker, and letting us bless us with this confirmation of our perfect game with a nice tracker score. And that's exactly what we're going to be focusing on today. This little blue pentagon, which makes us feel all very warm and nice inside. So in today's video, I've taken a bunch of your games, as well as some of my own, to show you why tracker scores at some times make sense, and why other times it is the dumbest thing in the world. For those who don't know how tracker scores even calculate in the first place, it's mainly based on these four things. Now the first is your win percentage. If you're looking at an individual score, this is going to be round win percentage. The second thing is your cast. This is basically what percent of rounds did you do one of the following. Get a kill, get an assist, end up surviving, or end up getting traded. ACS is what Valorant has in their game. This is what determines whether or not you get match or team MVP. And it's way too complicated, so here's just the text. It basically values multi-frags in first bloods, which is why duelists match MVP the most. And last but not least is damage delta per round. This is very simple, just the difference between how much damage you do versus how much damage you take. So a good damage delta just means you did more damage than you took. These are all great stats that added together can be indicative of strong in-game performance, but there is a few flaws. Games that are sweeps in one direction often just give free tracker scores, super free. Or on the contrary, if you lose, even if it's something like a 39, your tracker score tends to be really, really low. Here's another example, 413. Just because we lost, look at how low some of these scores are. Whereas the other team is just flying high. Now here's one more just to highlight how confusing this can be. So I want to compare these two tracker scores, 771 and 877. And let's see which one is better based on those four stats. Let's see who's got the better ACS. Okay, this one's better. Who's got the better delta damage? Okay, this one's better. Okay, who's got the better cast? This one's better. So I had three out of the four better stats, but just because they won the game by two rounds, my tracker score is lower. Why does this make sense? Now the reason tracker score even exists in the first place is to try to measure which players are going to improve rank up actually playing beyond their current elo so s tier is the best of the best players a is okay you're a little bit better b is okay this is average c get help d what are you doing did you buy this account mr coach i want to get better but how worry no more come join our discord and check out the server shop where you can get an aim and movement analysis watch parties and an improvement server of 100 plus channels of every topic you can think of. Did I mention all the benefits? Slayerkey.com slash support. So what are you waiting for? Stop deranking and start improving today. Now don't get me wrong, tracker scores can also look like this. This is pro player Curry when he did his Sage only to Radiant challenge. And my god is that blue. Here's another one. I think this guy's really good. Look at that, 1000 tracker score. Definitely not a smurf. What the hell is this? But this is basically only time you see someone have an average blue tracker score is when they're smurfing, which is weird because you assume blue tracker score means you're climbing through the ranks. And that's exactly what they try to say here. But let me show you how wrong that can really be. Last act, I had a 400 tracker score, but for some reason I still climbed from Ascendant 3 to Immortal 3. And even one of my students who climbed from Plat 1 to Ascendant 3 in one act. I want everyone to try to guess right now what was his tracker score. 592. Next act, they climbed to Immortal 3. Guess what their tracker score was. 588. So I wanted to take a closer look at a high tracker score game in order to give an idea where exactly this score comes from and what it misses out on. So shout out to Sai from our discord for sending this in. I'm just going to look at one round and go over what it will show and what it won't show. So this round is just a very typical rifle v rifle. Cypher is on C, Sky's in garage, 2A, 1B, very typical setup. Three players are spotted A, our hero rotates over to short, and they haven't used any util, and our hero throws a grenade at them. Sad we talked about this, you don't use your grenade here, you wait for them to use something first. So this is something that the tracker would never show. It would never show that this util didn't get value, because utility trading can simply not be shown in these stats. The impact of this grenade can barely be shown. Now the round continues, seems like they left A, so we rotate through B. Our hero rotates over to site and notices it's awfully quiet. If we go ahead and look at the map, there is a big gap in B and A. This was an over-rotate. Over-rotates cannot be shown in stats. 
giving up B when our Cypher stores both trips that Cam cannot be shown on stats. The Sova lurks up, kills our teammate. The one potential thing that could have happened here is we got his trade. This didn't end up happening, but here's something else. He baited himself to help the broom get a kill. That will not be shown on stats. We are three people on C looking at a tripwire. What is going on? This is not shown on stats. So we assume it's an A hit without considering the fact that they push through B and they end up planning B. Not shown on stats. We leave our Cypher to push A link alone. This is not shown on stats. We use Boom Bot. We ask for a push. Our Boom is trying to help. This Boom is across the map. We push it alone. This is somewhat shown on stats. You can get some like uh, trade trade stats here. But Boom is very late. He uses Stim. Too little, too late. Low HP. We lose the round. So now it's like, okay, we didn't get traded. We lost the round. We got to kill this round. And that's about it. None of our util this round really had insane impact, but there are way more mistakes here that would have actually changed the outcome of the round and made cause for improvement, but simply weren't shown. C'est tout pour dire. C'est tout pour dire. C'est tout pour dire. Tracker scores can be completely accurate, but also completely inaccurate. I've had games where I feel like I did 90% the best I could have, and I check my tracker. So remember, there are many performance stats and things that impact your game that Tracker can simply not track. And they are aware of this. Utility usage, comms, smurfs, toxic teammates, these things can have a significant impact over our game. And as mentioned in my recent mental video, these numbers are largely inconclusive in a game with as many factors as Valorant. A thousand tracker score is a thousand tracker score. Numbers are numbers. And they don't make a player good. They don't make a player bad. Even more so, there's really nothing conclusive you can do with these numbers. Oh, I have a bad tracker score. I guess I just keep practicing. So please stop treating tracker scores as a tool to improve and don't get so caught up in them. I'm sure you're doing your best and making great progress on your journey of improvement. Now get out there, kick some butt. That's going to be all from your favorite translucent shade of white. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe and all that jazz. And thanks for watching.